so it's after 5.30, uh, and uh, so we will go ahead and open the meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, Move the clothes. <laughs> 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 a lot of holidays. Yeah, yeah. Like, so okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, we have three items on the uh, agenda for tonight. Uh, first, I'll introduce the board members who are present. Maureen Scanlon, Sarah Northrup, Elizabeth Silver, and Bob Riddle, and myself, I'm David Bloomberg. Um, Carolyn Mish is here from the Office of Planning and Sustainability, providing support to the board. And um, uh, notice of today's hearing was published on November 29th and December 6th, 2018. Um, we uh, we'll start with public comment, but before we do, um, for each item on the agenda, I'll ask that we'll first invite the applicant or the representative of the applicant to come up to the podium and address the board. The board will then uh, have a chance to ask questions that we have, and then if there are any members of the public who would like to address an application or ask questions, they'll be given an opportunity to do that. I ask that everybody uh, introduce themselves by with name and address for the record before speaking and I ask that all questions and concerns be addressed to the board not to each other and then we'll make sure to try to get whatever answers people might be looking for um, before we open with the first agenda item we always open with an opportunity for public comment this would be for anyone here from the public who would like to address the board about something that's not on the agenda for tonight so I'm asking and I'm not seeing anybody here for public comment. So we will move on to the first application on the agenda tonight, and that is a request for a finding for a change to a non-conforming residential sign submitted by the Ellery at 259 Elm Street, Northampton, map ID 31A-11. And I'll ask, do we have somebody, a representative? Thank yes. you. you could just Introduce yourself and give us a brief description of the application. Sure, please. my name is Deirdre Savage, and um, I live, my home address is 1083 Washington Street in Gloucester. Mm -hmm. But I'm one of the um, one of the new owners of the current existing Autumn Inn. My business partner and I purchased it in April. Mm -hmm. We're in the process of doing some making some improvements, and we will be re renaming it the Ellery when the improvements are complete. Um, so our request is for an approval of the redesign of the existing sign mm -hmm. and um, out in front of the hotel it's a slightly smaller sign different shape than the you know the existing the oval it's slightly smaller kind of long skinny rectangle and um, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have okay thank you first we'll give the board a chance Questions. I just did the math, and it's a lot smaller. It's same illumination. Yes. What is HDU? Wouldn't you have HDU? Um, I can't remember. It's high density something. It's urethane. a. Urethane. Okay. Sorry. Yes, urethane. Urethane. Thank you. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, Carolyn, I'll ask. The lighting is pre-existing non-conforming, so they can continue with that lighting. Um, you have the jurisdiction to, you know, put conditions on. The reason why it's non-conforming is that it's not horizontal. I mean, it's aimed up a little bit, but it's captured by, I mean, the thing we worry about that is if it's all the way up or if it's going across the sign to other properties or around the sign. It doesn't appear that it's doing that at this time. So, and, and, and the illumination level is not, doesn't appear to exceed what the um, standards are. So um, it's really just because of the angle of it. We don't allow, you know, angled up lighting. Does it go up in there? I don't think so. I, I think because of the nature of the use of it, all, you know, all night. But there's been no complaints from the neighborhood? I haven't heard any. I think part of that is because it's on the sign and it doesn't appear to, you know, reflect off and sort of create a, a glow more than just, you know, the sign. So that's my guess. 
if the direction of it is that exact, this sign is a little longer. It will be. It will be targeted on the sign. The, the, the heads are adjustable, so I'm acutely aware of the, the sensitivity, and it will be on the sign. Is there anything in the composition of the sign itself and the materials that changes the reflective quality? I don't believe so at light? all. It's, um, it's, it's, I don't, no, I don't think it will. Well, white versus yeah. autumnal yellow. <laughs> 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 Any other questions from the board? No? No. And is there anyone here from the public who would like to address the board about this application? See nobody. Um, which excuse yes. me, which application is that for the ottoman? Yeah, the sign for the ottoman, the change to the sign in front of the ottoman on Elm Street. Well, I own 289 Elm, which is a couple of houses down. Mm -hmm. The only thing I was concerned about was, are they going to change the structure of the building? Uh, well, that application isn't before us. I don't know if you're able to answer that. We're not changing the structure, yeah. if yeah. anything. This is just for the sign, and the applicant is saying there's no plan to change the structure of the building. Although that's not before this board right now. Right now, it's just the request for a finding. Well, the articles that I saw online, they said that for now, they just wanted to change the sign, but it didn't give any specifics about changing the structure because this is a historical area. I'm a residential yeah, neighborhood. It's in, the, it's in the Elm Street Historic District, mm -hmm. right? So any change in the appearance would have to be approved by the Elm Street Historic District Commission. Uh, and you, that's you're not, not giving them us. permission no, to change the structure? No. Unless the, the Historical Society agrees with it? Is that what I hear? Uh, say, that, say that again, please. In other words, it seems to me that you are not going to give them permission to change the structure. Correct. That's that not, is not, that's not uh, unless the historical society approves it. Right. And we're not even being asked for permission okay. to change the structure, just the sign. Then it was just a mistake how they wrote it. You know I how see, sometimes I they write that, articles you know, maybe that the newspaper leaves things yeah. hanging and you don't yeah. really know what's yeah. going on? Yeah. And, and your name, please? Just... Delia Martinez. Okay. I own 289 Elm Street. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? With it? question about this application. If not, uh, do we have a motion to close the public hearing for this application? Motion closed. Okay, second. Second. Okay, all in favor, that's unanimous. And a motion on the request for the finding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will make a motion. Second. That we close the public hearing on the Approve a finding for change to a non-conforming residential sign by the L rate at 259 Elm Street, Map ID 31A11. Um, the according to the application with um, size and graphics as presented. Okay. Second. Oh, uh, discussion? Um, I would just Want to mention that in, in my view, the change in the sign is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing condition. And if we're ready to vote, all in favor, that's unanimous. Thank you. You're all set. Thank you. Thank you all. I appreciate your time. Yep. Be careful if and you're driving back. It's tonight. slippery out, and there are a lot of there's a lot of traffic. I am trying to figure out where I'm going. Okay. <laughs> Gloucester. Northampton or Woodstock? What do you guys vote for? Uh, that's a tough one. I, yeah, think, I think I know a nice hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, the second item on the agenda, it is past 540, so we can call for uh, the hearing on this request for a special permit for a larger wall sign at Burger King by Callahan Sign LLC at 344 King Street, Northampton, map ID 18D-47. Yes, sir. <coughs> Uh, good evening, board members. Uh, my name is James Callahan, uh, one of the owners of Callahan Sign Company uh, from Pittsfield, Mass. And I'm here before you tonight to request uh, permission to uh, add a tagline to the front of the restaurant, which is part of the Burger King corporate branding for all the stores. And uh, apparently this exceeds the square footage allowed uh, by the zoning. And 
Springs. Uh, it is a uh, small, well, not small, but it's letters on the front of the, freestanding letters on the front of the building uh, that read flame growing since 1956. It says 1954 on our. Oh, I'm sorry, 54. You're right. I missed a couple of years there. <laughs> okay. Um, are, are these illuminated? Uh, yeah. They are. They're specified to be uh, internally illuminated, and the faces are gray. So at night, it would it would be a uh, dim white uh, glow. It wouldn't be stark white. So, um, it looks like in the drawing, the, the facade of the building, it looks like these are letters individually standing there. Uh, they're mounted to a uh, bottom raceway. Mm -hmm. It goes across the front of the... Uh, they're actually attached to the top of the canopies. Those are open canopies that go around the building. Mm -hmm. um, so it isn't that there's a panel behind them that's lit up, it's that the individual letters. Correct. They're each made of white acrylic. Right. With lighting. Those LED and Ds within the. I see. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, so it's in the three inches of the. Mm -hmm. So is the problem here that it's a second sign, or is it the size of the second sign? It's the second sign, right? It's the second sign. Yeah, so there's a 100 square foot maximum for a front wall right. sign right. and one sign. And um, so you could either draw a box around the whole thing, and it would be bigger, or you could, so either way it's a special permit, so either for a second sign or a bigger single. Seen. But since they're kind of separated <laughs> anyway, it probably makes sense to see the second. So the first sign is the Burger King logo, the round. Correct, that's on the front of the building. Which is also internally lit. Correct. Are there hours of this lighting specified in the application? Uh, I'm sure that um, the owner would be amenable to restricting the hours of illumination. Uh, but typically, the signs would shut off when the this, this door shuts off. I don't think this is a 24 hour location, so. Um. So the first sign is, um, let's see, it's a uh, six foot diameter that makes it somewhere around 36 square feet. Correct. Six feet. by six. Three pi R, well, two pi R, yeah. Um, and so the the size of the entire flame grilling since 1954 is 27.97 square feet. Which is two in the individual letters. Right. Do you have a cross section drawing? Yes. Yeah. Understand the standard, it has to not detract from the character of the neighborhood and should be permitted in the public interest, right? I'm just curious what the public interest is. Well, well, how is the, uh, where your burgers are. What is the no, word we know where the mean? burgers are? <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I was asking what the public interest is in having the thing grilling since 1954 oh. added, which is part of our standard. And this is an entirely new sign. It's right. never said that right. on the front. Right. So the, uh, from my understanding, they're adding the ta their tagline to the and brand. What's the public interest in that? Do, do you have 
Carolyn, any other examples of public question. interest from when there's something that kind of seems like advertising? <laughs> Um, it gives the business two signs. Yeah. Is that loosely interpreted or construed? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's up to you to interpret. Um, so uh, there, there's no specificity about what that is. I mean, typically, sort of pulling back, not just looking at a particular tagline I issue, but sort of thinking about what message is important to making sure people understand where they're going, you know, when they get to a place. Sometimes extra signs are necessary for that, just added information. Um, Entrance, exit, repair shop here. Or, yeah, so, right. Um, deal, that's a good example of, you know, you want to make sure you're orienting people to different portions of the building or, Maybe there's multiple stores within a building, so you have a sign for each of the stores. Like Stop and Shop has, you know, multiple signs across the facade um, because there are different departments within it, so you've approved those. I guess in the yeah. loosest sense, you could you could suggest that it's enhancing commerce to enable Burger King, but you could apply this to just, and to, to swallow up the rule, I guess, for, to, to uh, enable Burger King to use their national bat, you know, new branding um, to help ensure the their, what they perceive to be an increased likelihood of success as a business, but that's pretty extreme. <laughs> I'm, I'm I, reaching. But I, I hear Carolyn that we did approve the stop and shop, so it's But that's more. telling people there's certain food you can get there. I suppose that's a public service. This is telling this people is that they've been making cooked. burgers and no, flame no, grilling since 1950. There was a time when we, um, the Walmart store, that uh, discount store right next to it, I forget what the name of it is, but they wanted the sign. And we didn't give it to them because if they had a sign there and went out of business, Walmart could expand the size of their own sign. But that was like the three or four businesses there, right? I, I, don't, recall, I don't recall that one. Um, so, I, sorry. <laughs> it just came popping yeah. in my mind. I mean, the other thing to note <clears throat> is when, you know, one of the things and what we did in evaluating the sign originally is you know, the way the ordinance works is you could draw a box around the whole thing and if it's left if it's 100 square feet we count that as one sign but because there's this extra space up here it exceed you know this plus this when you draw the box mm -hmm. is more than 100 square feet so this could shrink and they could create a 100 square foot area that include incorporates all of that messaging and it would still meet the intent of the ordinance so I guess you could look at that two ways. One is, you know, if they if it were smaller, then they wouldn't need to come here um, because you could just wrap it up and say, yeah. On the other hand, if that's the case and they could do it um, as the, with a logo and tagline, um, does it make sense to be slightly bigger um, and a second sign? Because if they could do it anyway and put the message in there, is it in somehow in the public interest, or is there another way to look at it that the um, it doesn't detract from the neighborhood? By being yeah, see, that's there. Is, yeah. is an and there. It's not either. I mean, or. That's true, yeah. but but I still, I mean, I'm personally inclined mm -hmm. to sort of focus. I realize it's conjunctive. The word and is there but focus on my feeling that it doesn't detract from the character of the neighborhood and kind of apply a common sense analysis uh, versus a letter of the ordinance analysis, but but that's sort of my reaction. Uh, so the color of this is going to be white, right? It's just going to be white. It's not going to be like 40,000 shades. Of no, it's actually uh, it's a it's white plastic and then you apply a silver film over it. So, it so at night, you actually becomes gray, okay. not white. Okay. Other question. So we, um, the standard is to measure the square area and not the live area yeah. of the sign. I was wondering that you, you can't just measure because that. Because if we measure the live, area, no, because it talks about drawing a box around okay. the whole thing. So box. That's how yeah. it's measured. Yeah. Okay.
that's why, for example, the ottoman we just looked at, we measured it as yeah. if it was a box. Yes. Right. When the live area was actually smaller. And right. Mr. Callahan, are all of the Burger Kings that have adding this flame grilling at that exact same size? Uh, I cannot answer that because uh, each design is different. So in, in a larger format store, this tagline might be larger. Uh, I haven't seen any of them that are smaller than this. It's the same tagline. Right. Just varying sizes? Uh, I believe so. I believe they have two different sizes. Could, this be, could this be shrunk to be the automatic? I don't believe that they offer a smaller version of this. This is the smallest one. Well, who is they? The, the imaging company that does all their all the Burger King imaging. We don't care what they offer. All right. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing um, the logo sign is somewhere around 36, in case I'm at 40 square feet. But this sign at 20 feet long by 1.3 feet is under 30 feet. Together, they're under 70 square feet. Right, but the issue is that we've got two separate ones. Right. Right. Well, the also right. the issue is the way it's measured is by the box that. Oh, the circle is measured as okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's why Still. this and this takes it to over a hundred. It doesn't. Six by six is thirty-six. Twenty times one point three. It is. It almost is thirty. You have to include the space around it. As all that Carolyn is space. describing. This black no, wall. No, you have no, to. Oh, the space we're measuring is this. So that would be one side. Okay. In any case, I'm not as concerned about the size as, um, uh, in general, um, we we have a. Um, a slow incremental creep of additional lighting. More signs, more lighting, um, more internal lighting, brighter internal lighting, LEDs are great, they're brighter, the light carries further. It's it's just, it's just continuing to add up. So I'm I'm less concerned about the size as I am about the ambient light. There are the, you know, residential area directly behind this, um, housing authority property, and we have, um, if you're talking about being smaller, one could propose, say, flame grilling without the year. Not that I'm sure that was a fine year, but um, if we're concerned about but isn't, isn't the, the issue of uh, I'll call it light pollution, governed separately by the uh, what is it, the dark skies provisions, or or I guess it's um, still within our discretion. It's to within your discretion, just because you're at granting a special permit. Right. So you know if I mean maybe that's the the trade off. You don't want the lighting, you know, on all night, and allowing the additional identification of the branding is in the public interest only if it's not also detracting from the public interest by being lit all night or something like that. Um, but I think it makes, so you do have the jurisdiction about the light, I think it um, uh, probably makes sense to sort of think about the, the size and the context that, as um, Sarah was noting, you know, there. if you add the two pieces together, it's still less than 100 square feet, even though you know, typically we'll, by right when we look at it, we say draw the box. So, um, you know. so from your description of the light that's being cast, it's sounding like you're saying that it will be more like a soft glow and not projecting light. Correct. It's, it's the lighting is contained within the letters, and the way to make the sign. Is a they put a silver film over it so that it's not glaring white. It actually becomes more like a gray, like a light gray color. Um, if if the, the hours of lighting are a concern, I can ask the the board to approve it. I can request that the uh, hours of this sign be limited to you know, you know ten o'clock at night or something like that. If that 
that's a concern. Or when they're open. And what about uh, just limiting it to the flame grilling, and if you move that over a little bit to our left as we're looking at the sign, and it's all contained within there, then you then it would be within that 100 square feet, wouldn't it? But we're all set. It's actually look like the like the sign's not functioning properly. Mm -hmm. It could also just look like if some are lit and some are not, like the bulbs were lit. Why would it just flame grilling is lit? You mean and not no, six? and not including the rest of it. Um, just having the flame grilling. Oh, you mean eliminating the verbiage, not the light. Yeah. Eliminating that end of the sign and then it's the the with the yeah. national corporation. Yeah. To yeah. Do it feels that. a little bit to me like micromanaging, I mean, but it is might, within our sure. discretion. You yeah. might just say, instead of saying cut off it, cut it off, say that the size can't be more than X, you know, to fit in with a 100 square foot box, and they can figure out what part they want. Yeah. Hundred square foot box is going to have could fit a lot more verbiage in it than we see here. Well, that's true. So what's right behind this? You said the housing authority. I didn't think there was anything. Right behind no, it. Yeah, they're not the housing. Well, oh, maybe the corner, but there is a there is a subdivision street that goes behind it. It's off except to Barrett. Barrett. Yeah. There's a bunch of Hathaway Farms or something. Yeah, there's something no, before that. No, no, that's on Barrett. That's on Barrett. But in any case, we're ordering, you know, residential. And yes, this is highway business. <coughs> and how much light do we need? Do we need? I like that it's kind of reflective during the daytime. And then not a glittering bright light that night. I, I feel in support of the wanting the business to do well, that they've gone in a direction where they're trying to um, differentiate themselves from McDonald's from their competition. So I get the rationale for wanting to really add this tagline to their brand. It actually f feels a little overwhelming to the Burger King sign itself. So I would, I wish there was a way to handle it smaller, but I wouldn't feel like a uh, direction to go is to modify it. That feels like that's not. I agree. It's not, that's not ours to suggest. I know we could, but that doesn't feel like the direction to go in terms of any suggestions. And I appreciate how you just put that in terms of the business. I, I think what what I'm reacting to is the stripifying effect of King Street, you know, even more so than it already is. Um, more lights, more um, fast food joints, more advertising of that. So, um, you know, it really, I'm not sure that it's a public interest analysis that might or might not be. An argument could be made either way. That's where I come down. Okay. Did we? Did I already ask if anyone from the public uh, wanted to address this? It looks like the answer is no. Um, so I guess we could close the public hearing if we think we do not need any more input from the public or the applicant. Mm -hmm. okay. Second. Second. That's all in favor is unanimous. Um, and, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a unanimous vote, right? Um, I, I personally don't really have, I hear everything everyone is saying and I, and I appreciate it and I'm sensitive to it. Um, but I don't know, my gut feeling is I, I, don't, I don't feel like I have a, a, a big problem with this. But, but I, guess, uh, I guess we can do a motion just on the, on the, uh, the application in front of us, and then there could be a modification or amendment. Does that make sense? If people feel the need, and, and or if it gets voted down, it gets voted down. Um, unless nobody wants to make a motion to approve it. <laughs> For 
procedural reasons, somebody could make that motion. And then we can have discussion, possibly make amendments. Um, okay, so for procedural, I will make the motion to approve the permit for the larger wall sign at Burger King by Callahan sign, um, 344 King Street, map ID 18 d 47 And you yes. reserve the right to amend your own motion. Yes. So, um, a, uh, a second, um, oh. yeah, if, or, and then discussion. Yes. Um, go ahead. Well, I'm just uh, rereading the, the zoning. Deals may issue a special permit allowing more than the number of signs here in the four signs of the larger size, but not taller than here and permitted, provided that one, signs are located only where they are otherwise permitted in the district, and two, the Board of Appeals determines that the architecture of the building, the location of the building, or the land or nature of the use being made of the building or land is such that additional signs or signs of a larger size would not detract from the character of the neighborhood and should be permitted in public interest. Additional ground signs shall only be approved if there are exceptional circumstances to warrant their approval or not all efforts. Taking to keep additional ground sizes as small and low as possible. Three, the Board of Appeals specifies in the permit the exact sign <coughs> permit, the size and location of the sign or signs, and if applicable, imposes other restrictions. Any change in said sign is required in the order by a special permit unless special permit specifies what types of things are allowed. Mm -hmm. So does anybody want to propose any amendment to the motion? I would propose that the um, illumination be turned off uh, at close of business. Of Can that apply to the other sign as well, the Burger King sign, or is that not within anything that we can consider well, now? This was a motion, it's for a second sign, so it would really just be only for the, second, for the sign. second sign. So they can keep that first sign on. Yeah. But that's already the case. It, I mean, it is whenever they keep it on is when they already keep it on. Mm -hmm. Right. So this one wouldn't be visible when it's turned off at night. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'll go along with that, and um, I, again, you know, my my concerns are um, the folks in the visuals or the recipient of light. Period. Not if it's direct, even if it's not directly in their line of vision. And you know, as I said, the stripifying of King Street even further than it already is. Um, but I don't see any reason to single out Burger King for you know other treatment than many of the other businesses that we've already approved there, so that doesn't really make sense. So I will go along with that. So all in favor of the motion with the modification about my Okay, that's unanimous. Okay, you're all set. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. And I'm sure the owner would be amenable, amenable to, uh, you know, if there is a concern about the lighting, that he would turn the sign off earlier than, than needed. Um, Sort of you know, the Burger King logo is, is what you know, people identify the building with. This is secondary signage. Um, so if that's a concern, after the sign is up and it's a concern with the board, you get a complaint about it. I'm sure it'll be more than reasonable and we can wire it so that, that sign can go off earlier. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you board Thank members. Thanks very much. And moving on to the third and final application before the board tonight, it is a request for a special permit for sales as part of the home business by Ty Young. Twee. Twee. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, uh, uh, at, and this is for the property at 293 Elm Street, Northampton, map ID 31A-7. Hello. Hi. Hi. My name is Twee Wynn. Um, it's not Twee Young. Oh, it was, just it was a typo, and, and one place spelled your name as if it were young, so it got okay. carried other places had it correct. Um, it's Twee Lynn, and uh, like he said, I live at 293 Elm. Um, my family and I moved here two years ago from Portland, Oregon, and um, it's the first place that we've lived that we really want to 
set on roots. And we have uh, a sunroom that's 8 by 20 that I would like to open up as a, an art store for local artists that I've met. Um, there's a huge community, as you guys probably know, of local artists here. And I just keep hearing the same thing. And, and as a person who creates also, um, retail space is just not accessible to so many people. And the fact that I have the space in my house and there's going to be little to no overhead, I'd like to provide a space to community artists to be able to sell their things and possibly not have to mark up their art so much to cover the curator's costs. I'm requesting two days a week initially, um, possibly Tuesdays and Thursdays, normal business hours, nine to five. Um, is there enough parking, assuming you get traffic? Right, we live on um, Elm, which is a pretty traffic heavy area as mm -hmm. is. We have um, a lot of street parking right in front of the house, as well as a bike lane and then the traffic lane. So we do have street parking. But no separate um, room parking or where to park? No. Or... I have my own private driveway, but I don't mm -hmm. see opening that up. You're not, this, it's not a corner lot, is it? It is. It it's is the corner of Elm and Massasoit. Now I know where it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Is it the, the um, is it the northeast corner of Elm and Massasoit or the southeast corner? Oh my goodness, I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm directionally. Um, okay. It's, 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 it's a, it's a the greenhouse, tall greenhouse. Yes. Uh, yes, thank you. Hmm. I think we have to be very careful about on the one hand the the careful and carefully crafted and very detailed description of of a home business. And on the other hand, a retail use in a strictly residential neighborhood. Now, the Autumn Inn <laughs> happens to be there, but that's been grandfathered in for at least 50 years. Um, one thing the zoning ordinance doesn't um, doesn't allow is retail use in, in having stores, so to speak, in residential neighborhoods. But I might be getting ahead of ourselves. Um, and, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll have an opportunity to expand on that, but but it, it is a bit of a concern for me. Um, any other questions from the board? I'm, I'm, I'm interested in in maybe. So you're an artist as well. No, I'm not. I just so you just create. you just want to offer up your space to well, I, other artists. I create. I'm not a professionally trained artist, um, but I do create and I make things. I just don't like to refer myself as that. But um, yes, I do create things, mm -hmm. and I will be opening it up to local artists as well. But you want to sell your things? Yes. But the other artists will be selling their things. Yes. So it won't be limited to the sale of items produced by the the homeowner. On site. Mm. On site. No, I mean I will be. I will have some of my things as well, but it's mainly like curating other local artists' things. I don't have questions, but I would like to hear if there are people. Here. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll give people a chance to talk. Um, if there, and we can always come back to board questions. So should we go ahead? And, yeah. Okay. So um, is there anyone here? Who would like to ask questions about this application and I would ask that you direct the questions to the board and then we can in turn ask questions of the applicant yes ma'am I think you raised well that. I have I have some statements to make so you tell me when I can talk about it uh, I own 289 Elm Street yes. which is sure. now right now. next to our house yeah sure if yes. you want to make your statements we're we're ready to hear them I can do it now Sure. Yes, Maybe we'll trade places if you wouldn't sure. mind sitting for a minute now. My name is Daniel Martinez. 
and I own the property at 289 Elm Street, which is right next to her house. I recently received notice that my neighbor of 293 Elm Street has filed an application to add a business on the grounds of her property. I have to say, I was like in complete shock. I've lived in this house for 18 years. If the Sony board grants this permit to add affordable living and workspaces next to my property, it will significantly and negatively impact my home and my home's value. I have lived in my home for the past 18 years, enjoying a quiet neighborhood. Granting a permit for sales as a part of a home business in a historical, quiet neighborhood will create noise and will increase pedestrian traffic next door. This situation will impact the tranquility and peace and quiet of my residents. I have made a significant investment in this quiet and historical neighborhood and do not want my home value to decline due to the presence of a business next to my house. And close is a letter from Darwin's real estate stating that the serious effect of this zoning permit will have on the value of my property. It is my sincere wish that the zoning board will not grant this permit, which will result in the destruction of a quiet residential and historical neighborhood. I also have the letter from Gardens Real Estate, and it says, application for a new business at 293 Elm, to whom it may concern. We are being informed by Delia Martinez, the owner of 29 Elm Street, that the owner of the building property wishes to add a business on the grounds. We believe that the proposal of affordable living and work spaces in the neighboring property could create noise, traffic, and congestion problems, which might immediately impact the tranquility and value of Mrs. Martinez's property. Mrs. Martinez has invested quite a lot into her Victorian home. The addition of a business of this magnitude directly next door to her house could change the quiet character of the neighborhood and diminish the investment that she has made to her property. I also have, um, I have gone over the application that was submitted to you. And there are some items in here, for example, on number one, it says in here that the trees and plants around it, this is number one, this is the application that you have at the top. It says in here that the landscaping will create a sound barrier to the house. It doesn't create that. It's just there's some small bushes and a couple of trees, but I've lived there and I've used my, my side porch all the time and um, it doesn't create that. And then at the bottom it says that it will abide all the fire, electrical, and plumbing, and health costs. I know that in the spring, there, the gutters are, there's a pipe that goes in that was never put all the way to the street, and it floods the area on my land all the time. And that's something, the only issue that I know about. At the bottom of that first page that you have, it says that the projected store will be along the east wall facing the neighbor property at 289, um, which is my house. This situation affects the value of my house, nobody else. At the bottom, it says that it projects from any direct contact and visibility to customers. That's not true because I could see very clearly because that area, that porch, is right next to my porch. And I could see it. The bushes there are not uh, Italian cypress, you know, next to each other that creates a wall. They're not that. So this is something that I know from living in my house for 18 years. Page two on number six, 
at the bottom, it says that uh, six number one, it says to increase the availability of affordable studio, living and work space, performance and rehearsal space. I don't know where there's gonna be rehearsal space in that, in that porch and it's all that noise, all those, you know, I just don't know where. Then it says that they're gonna have consignment arrangements um, in that area. I don't know where, there's no patio, there's, there's nothing else, and that area is right next to my porch. Again, the next page is right here. It's number two under that six, halfway through the tavern, and it says um, that she wants to develop affordable arts and performance venues. Uh, provide incentives to create affordable living and work and studio space in the area. I, I don't see how I'm going to have workshops and studio space and everything else right on top of my house. Because it's a business, it's a store. Um, down here it talks again about the workspace on strategies, on item P like Peter, and the other one, it's on number seven, towards the bottom, it says that she would like to have open studios in addition to store hours and workshops for the artists. You know, I understand she wants to do that, but I bought this property because it was a residential, quiet, historical area. I had no idea that I was gonna have a business on top of my house. After I have spent time and invested in my property, raised my children for 18 years, and I'm just beside myself. I just can't believe that in a residential area that is a historical property, in that area, I'm sure you people know where it is, that a business is gonna be right on top of me. I'm just, I don't even know how to explain. The last one here, which is the last page at the bottom, it says, talks about having workshops, um, teaching people and techniques of art. Well, you know, that is something that, that happens when people have a business. But again, I am very, very concerned that I have, to, I have spent so many years and invested so much in living in a quiet historical neighborhood, I'm gonna have a store on top of me. It was my understanding that that area was supposed to be a residential historical area that I was never gonna have this problem. That's why <coughs> I've invested so much in it. And I shared, you know, I raised my children there. And I, I'm just beside myself. I just can't believe it. It's true, isn't it, that it's supposed to be a residential area? Well, well, that's one of the things that we will be discussing right this evening. But yes, it's a residential zoning district and it's a predominantly residential neighborhood except for the hotel, but uh, yeah, which has well, been but that's grandfathered. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I bought the place from Mrs. Honer and she owned it for more than 20. So I, I know about 50 years, you know, yeah. that, that was there. Right. Because I, I spoke with Mrs. Honer before I bought my right. place. Right. She, she used to own it. And, uh, and she said that that was there when she, the place right. many years ago so so we will we will have a discussion right you know in, in very shortly that and taking into account the uh, observations that you've made so, okay thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
copy of that for the board? Is, it the is that the um, Goggins letter? Uh, we have, this is my letter, and this is the letter Thank from Goggins. You. Thank you. We'll, we'll pass that around and, and make it a part of the file. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, take a look. Is there anyone else who would like to? Yes, ma'am. Um, first of all, thank you for doing this uh, job. It's <laughs> it hasn't gotten any easier over the years, I hope. Um, uh, so I, I am here as uh, a former, I, I'm sorry, Mary Ford is the name, and the address is uh, number six, Massasoit. So um, I am, uh, my husband and I are <laughs> across the street from the neighbor on Massasoit who is next to uh, Tree and Julia and Ben. Um, so L-shaped, if, if you Got can Got picture that. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that neighbor and our house are uh, on opposite sides, the first two houses that face Massasoit. The corner houses are both uh, nice big Victorians that face down. Um, and I, I find myself in this kind of odd uh, position where a lot of my thinking about this application um, goes back and forth and and I'm thinking about it from the history of how <laughs> we've tried to do our planning and sustainability um, and not just as a neighbor so first of all as a neighbor um, my husband and I really treasure this family and um, we know that Ms. Young and her daughter both show signs of design creativity uh, that really enriches um, our uh, little corner on, on Massasoit. And I wouldn't have any fear that um, anything put into that sun porch wouldn't be tasteful and quiet uh, and, if necessary, shielded from uh, one or two neighbors by planting another uh, bush or two. Uh, so that's not um, an issue for me. If you're going to make a change like this one that's proposed, this would be, um, I think, uh, a perfect applicant. But there is the issue of, you know, zoning in a larger sense and, and what its purpose is. And here again, I'm kind of torn back and forth. Um, I, most of you uh, haven't been around in this uh, function long enough to, to maybe know that in the 70s, Northampton had a real movement towards sort of purity of zoning and residential lots uh, were supposed to be made bigger um, and as you know we've recently allowed them to be smaller again but that was the movement in the 70s and the little neighborhood businesses that were scattered around town uh, were all therefore not lined up with the zoning unless they were grand, grandmothered in, um, like the Autumn Inn, um, or the little uh, grocery store in the neighborhood where we raised our kids on South Street, Mrs. Horseman's store. It, it didn't really need signage. We all knew it by the owner's name. 
and uh, and we saw it as a plus for the neighborhood. And I have no idea what it did to property values. But all around town, you now seldom see anyone with a, a storefront in a residential neighborhood. Um, I have real mixed feelings about that change because it's also perhaps part of gentrification. And um, Ms. Young's idea that um, by having retail space in her house, it can be more affordable, both because of, uh, for arts and crafts to be sold, both because of her own philosophy and because you're not paying downtown high retail um, rental values. So um, again, those are, those are changes or suggestions that I find to be very sympathetic. And the last thing I want to say about the history is after that purity movement to kind of suburbanize North, Northampton, if you will, um, one of the changes that came in uh, just about 25 years ago, maybe a little further, was to allow home businesses and write them back into the zoning with all the restrictions that you see in your in your book about allowed uses and uh, even about traffic. And um, we had a debate in the neighborhood uh, off of South Street where we raised our kids when a neighbor wanted to do massage. Just one <coughs> massage table. And the traffic issue came up. And I was surprised when I looked earlier today to see 25 cars a week because I'm pretty sure that we didn't put in number of cars per week. We were going by her suggestion and there were hairdressers around town who, who had this kind of approach that they don't have one customer at a time. So in a day, whether you had four people or ten people, you, you were getting them serially. So our issue back then with traffic was not the actual number, particularly not the number per week. It was about the kind of density of the traffic volume and traffic numbers, the intensity of it. That might be something the next time you guys rewrite the books. <laughs> to think about changing. So that's enough of, of um, the, the history. I guess, um, therefore, and, and my husband absolutely uh, supports Ms. Young and has confidence that whatever she puts into that small portion of her home uh, would not detract from our life as a neighborhood. But when I put back on my municipal government hat again, I guess the question that I think will occupy you, uh, and it does, and I know in some of the other topics that come up, it's that kind of slippery slope argument. Since retail uh, was not part of the zoning and wasn't even part of the home business, zoning when it was last done uh, uh, toward the end, or not last, but at the time that I knew it to be redone, late 80s, early 90s, and when we added uh, home business. Um, the, the, the idea of prohibiting retail as a category uh, can seem overly strict when you read Ms. Young's proposal. But if you're worried about a slippery slope, you could say, okay, would Elm Street turn into something that you might see in Gloucester or Lenox uh, in one of their historic touristy neighborhoods? Would you find a, a used uh, valuable classic book store 
going into another home, maybe one of the nice colonials down the street. Would somebody want to put in retro clothing to sell to Smith students somewhere along the street? So I think that slippery slope idea is probably the biggest challenge to the, to the application. I don't have any concerns as a, as a neighbor that it, you know, something terrible would happen across the street. Thank you. Do you have any questions for me? Thank you. Thank Sorry you. to talk Thanks. so long. Um, yeah, that was, that was actually, I think that perspective in history was, was very helpful. But I think where we are at this point in time in the evolution of our zoning ordinance is, is a, a place where a neighborhood like the Elm Street neighborhood, um, it, it's, it's, it's very clear that, that retail is not allowed for a home occupation, or at least the sale of something that's not produced by the homeowner. But, but again, I'll, I'll let other people uh, say say things if they want to. Am I allowed to? Yes, absolutely. Would you, sure, if you'd like to respond, that would be fine. Yes. Sure. Uh, well, I just wanted to address a couple of things that maybe wasn't clear in the application um, in the way I, I wrote it. But when I'm asking for workshop space, um, I'm just, I mean, it's an 8 by 20 sunroom. It's not huge. I understand the concern of increase in traffic and property value and, and people and all of that. Um, but I just want everyone to keep in mind it's an 8 by 20 space. It's small. It's not, it's not Walmart, you know, and, and um, it's a very heavy traffic area. And legally, I think I am allowed to have two open studios already a year. Um, and I, when I'm asking for workshops to share and teach art um, to the community, I'm talking about limiting it to no more than 10 people at a time. And with all due respect to my neighbor, I have more than that coming over to my house for dinner parties and just doing things anyway and never have any complaint. Um, it's, it's not a small house. I'm able to fit at least 30 people in my home at one point. Um, and this isn't going to be a regular thing. It's two days a week, nine to five, normal business hours. Um, there was just a lot addressed uh, in the first speaker, and I just would like to address some of the things that I disagreed with. Um, as far as the landscaping goes in the springtime, it is in the springtime when everything's in bloom, there is visibility blockage. Um, as far as noise <laughs> level goes, we're not going to have lasting music. It's going to be a shop where people can come in and look at things. There's not going to be any type of noise. I believe my daughter, my dog, and us were louder. I mean, it's. I mean, I don't know how else to explain that. I don't feel like it's going to have this enormous impact. Like, <coughs> um, the neighbor expressed. It's an eight by twenty community space where I just want to share and create. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here who wanted to uh, address the board for the for this application? Sure, please. Hi, my name is Gwen Holden Brennan. I don't live in Northampton. I live in Amber, so I don't. I, um, but I, Twee is a good friend of mine. I'm an artist, um, professionally trained, and. We both moved here from Portland, Oregon, where there are a number of small independent businesses, and that's part of what makes that community that we left so special. Um, and to me, I see that's what she's trying to do, is bring uh, a small gallery space to support local artists, and I um, just admire what she's trying to do, and I support her. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I think I speak for all of us when I say we all appreciate or I'll speak for myself. The, the idea, we appreciate the, the, the problems caused by high rents, although rents vary widely depending on where you are in different 
commercially zoned districts in Northampton. It's, it's not all Main Street, uh, Northampton, which where the rents are, are, are the highest. Um, and the, and the, the idea is, uh, is one that, that it's hard not to support. Uh, the, the idea of making inexpensive studio space available or space for artists to, to uh, show and, and sell their work. Um, but I do think we need to keep coming back to the, 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 the very detailed and, and very thoughtful in, in that sense um, provisions of the ordinance that govern allowed home businesses in residential zoning districts. And, 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 I, and, and, I, and that's what I propose to do, to, to sort of work our way through the uh, requirements uh, to, because that is, that is the ordinance that we here as volunteer board members are tasked with uh, applying to, to, to every application before us. Um, So I'm I'm just looking at the I'm looking at the ordinance. May I comment on you? Sure, please do. Um, yes, I I read through this um, earlier also, and and I I also appreciate the the idea in that we want to support um, you know the creative economy is is uh, important to the success of Northampton. And yes, the uh, gallery space is competitive and, and perhaps expensive and commissions and all that. So it's a great idea. Um, and by zoning, it's not the right spot for it. Um, I Personally, I think that, you know, in actually executing it, um, I think there was a little confusion. Your, um, the, the narrative in the application was quite good, and I understood that um, she's citing parts, not, not saying that she's going to uh, uh, rent out uh, affordable live work performance rehearsal space at all. She's just quoting the sustainable um, ideals that the uh, city has come up with. Um, so we, we understand that that is not part of the proposal and that the, the proposal is pretty modest and limited and, um, and that yes, uh, two artists open houses are, uh, per year are allowed. Um, and beyond that though, it is, it is, it's, it's very hard to squish it into the what's allowed in the zoning. Um, it would be very difficult to, uh, um, for the zoning board, we're, we're really just, uh, we are an enforcement body. Uh, it's the planning board and city council that make the rules and we interpret and, and enforce. And, it's, um, and so it's be pretty hard to say that, uh, uh, that, this would, that this would be allowed and maybe uh, as, um, as was so well said earlier, maybe the city does address this at some point and over you know, the span of a, you know, the coming decades, we, we may see more, um, you know, more walkable neighborhoods with neighborhood businesses that um, don't require cars everywhere all the time. Um, but that's, uh, that's where I come down. I, I have a question for Carolyn. I'm looking at the ordinance that says when a home business is allowed by right, and that includes a prohibition on the sale of goods that are not created in the home. But that's a home business allowed at, by, as of right, and that's the re that's an example of why we have to grant a permit because that's one example because we're being told that that uh, goods will be sold in the house that are not produced on the premises. Is that am I interpreting that? Correctly, um, procedurally, partially. So, right. There is. I mean, <coughs> this is 
in the definition section. So the first, uh, the opening paragraph specifies that the following occupations are not considered home business that clients will be seen in the home. <coughs> Although other, I'm sorry. Although other uses will be excluded on a case-by-case -case basis. Any traditional medical, dental practice, veterinary, hospital, restaurant, retail, or wholesale supply shop or store or mortuary. <coughs> and then, so that's <coughs> specifically excluding those category of uses. Mm -hmm. um, so I, this, um, so going down to I, no goods except those created in the home or those sold by internet, etc. maybe sold on the premise. I think when there are special permits, you have issued special permits previously where there may be products associated, so let's say there's a therapy session and someone is, has products that aren't made there, but it's salon associated. Where there's some shampoo right. or something. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, that that kind of thing then is the special permit criteria as opposed to opening up and saying, well, by special permit, you can do a retail use. So specifically, retail is not considered part of Oh. See, the, the biggest problem I'm having is that it almost feels like a request for a variance in that retail is not allowed in a residential right. district. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm having, I'm struggling with how to, uh, to characterize at least some of the pr proposed use that has been described as something other than retail. And, and a variance or spot zoning occurs when, when somebody wants to use their property in a way that is prohibited in that zoning district. It, it, it sort of undermines, for right or wrong, it sort of undermines the, the, the purpose of, of zoning restrictions. And that, that's, I think, the, the, the core of it for me that I'm struggling with. I, I, I love the idea of an affordable new space for artists. I love the idea that some other t cities have where there's much more of a mixing. And I remember, grow I grew up on Washington Ave, going to Mrs. Jackson's store in the corner of Washington Place. And those stores are all gone, and, and so, so zoning just won't allow them anymore. And, and, and that's why I really appreciated uh, Mayor Ford's description of the history, um, because that's not where the zoning ordinance is right now. And I think sort of to add to that, I think that's absolutely right. I think there has been an evolution from the 1990s when the ordinance was originally um, um, adopted. And that evolution has um, carved out allowances for artists and creative um, designers to sell their um, what they've designed and created on site and then have, and then it's evolved more to say, okay, you can even go beyond that. You can have open studios um, twice a year. So it has um, been one of those ordinances that has um, evolved over time to keep up with trends in the community and broader than that, but also to acknowledge the fact that there are different um, business models and different um, lower impact kinds of things that people do out of their homes. But I don't think we've evolved yet to then say, you know, um, you can have any kind of operating and business. Right. It's, it's, there's been some increment, to, to put it a third way, there's been some incremental additions of permitted commercial uses in residential neighborhoods, including two open studios a year, but, um, and including selling goods that you've made yourself in your home. But, but I think the proposal is maybe 10 or 20 years ahead of our time, so to speak, to the extent that, that those incremental changes may continue. But, but they aren't, but, 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 I'm, but I'm having trouble right now with the, or, you know, with the ordinance as it reads today and as we're obligated to apply it. Any other comments from the board? Or, uh, we have a, there's a planning board meeting coming up, but we could, if we had to relocate, we could, I, I assume. Yeah. But, um, no, I have no Not yet. Yet. I, yeah. um, I mean, I think the comments that have all been made, and thank you, Mayor Ford, for your um, enlightenment. I, I think it was really, you know, just uh, they covered it perfectly. Um, I, I just, 
want to make sure that Ms. Nguyen understands what we're stuck with here and that it's, <coughs> it's you know, as Mayor Ford said and as you said, we have no doubt whatsoever that, you know, what would transpire in the home would not have a significant impact. I can't speak for everybody, as said, but for myself, you know, I don't think it would create any, you know, it, it, it difficult problem with respect to transportation or people or foot traffic or any of that <coughs> noise. But, you know, what we're stuck with is this ordinance, which is very specific and exactly on point, which precludes the selling in the home of goods that aren't made in the home. It, it says that. And whether or not we agree with that as a board, our duty is to uphold the ordinances as they are now. And, you know, to the extent that, I mean, ordinances go through lots of public notice and discussion and, you know, as Carolyn was describing, evolutions. So if, if this is one that, you know, and my niece lives in Portland, I know Portland, I, her partner does, you know, is an artist and does this kind of work, and I understand what you're talking about in terms of that community, it's great for that. Um, you know, if there's a movement in this city to change our ordinances to look at something like what you're proposing in the future, you know, you'd be a great person to, you know, <coughs> take the lead and try to push this, but we're in the difficult position that I think Mayor Ford articulated for herself of supporting you and what you want to do. It's, it's just a great idea and we understand why on so many levels, um, but we're in a position where we're not at liberty to step outside of looking at this ordinance and to say, hey, that's a great idea, go with it. So, well, I thought that that was the whole point of this hearing was to get special permission. And, and you know, I understand that the ordinance is intact, but things are changing. I mean, we're, we're urban residential already. There's businesses, there's a medical complex. She has multi, you know, um, apartments that she rents. There's the Ottoman. I mean, there's, it's time. It's, it's changing now. I know this might be 10 or 15 years ahead of the time, but I don't understand why it can't change now. Yeah, the, the medical office is also grandfathered in for at least 50 years, and, and multifamily residential use is, is also allowed and or grandfathered in. Right, and, but and why, I, why can't we change the ordinance now? Well, that, that, that is, that it, we understand that that's the essence <coughs> of your request, and that the reason you're here is because this board does have some discretion to grant special permits and there but, is that it, but, it's, but we have to be at a comfort level no right i understand and there is that artist community here i mean it's it's i find it even more livelier than portland just because of the size of northampton it's just it's hard for us to get out there because we can't afford it nobody can afford it um most of the creators i meet it's second job because nobody can just afford to do this this would be my second job i'm a nurse by trade you know, it's, it's a need, and everything that I've read about the sustainability goals and the values of this city points to this, points to this change. Right. And it, I'm sorry, I, I sure. have more to say. Please, go ahead. And here's a person that's coming wanting to do that to your community, wanting to give up their time and energy and space, as well as give back to the community and be a nurse. And I want to do that. And... All I'm hearing right now is that, well, we can't because there's an ordinance in place. And you guys are saying that this is such a great idea and it's wonderful and you guys support it. What, there's an ordinance in place, yes, but this is a special permit here and you have to, each case is different, you know, and each house is different and each. Well, we're, we're also. It's just very frustrating because I'm hearing all this support, but then it's just like, well, there's this law in place and we can't do anything about it. That's kind of what's happening to this world right now, I feel. Right. Well, That's so depressing. It's like, sure. there's all these great ideas and support, but nobody will back it because of political whatever. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. Um, the, the, I also take into account the testimony by a neighbor who I take at face value as, as, as uh, um, uh, heartfelt and honest and, 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 and genuinely believing 
uh, this is your next door neighbor, that, that uh, there will be a negative impact. We, we, we take that into account as well. We take into account the, the advice of the Office of, Sust of uh, Sustainability uh, in, in, uh, into our decision making as well. And, and that office is responsible for <coughs> not only the long term, but, but, but uh, the short term interpretation or the real time interpretation of the current ordinances and land use regulation. And, and, and I personally think it's an exceptionally um, effective and thoughtful and professional Office of uh, Development and Sustainability. So, speaking for myself, I'm taking all of those things as well as as your your uh, your your the uh, proposals in your application. Um, so, we that's all we can do is take is take all of those things into account and change when you can. I mean, you're saying that what I'm asking is something that you're projecting that you can do 10 or 15 years from now. Why not now? I'm, I'm not saying we can do it 10 or 15 years from now. I'm, 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 Why that, am I that context the was I'm the, wondering for Northampton? Yeah, the, the, the answer is really with City Council. Uh, and you're going to say now we're passing the buck. But City Council is the body in our municipal form of government that has the responsibility and the legal authority to, to implement actual changes. Uh, just like these incremental changes in the definition of a home business. Um, we don't make those changes. We don't make the ordinance. But you can grant a special permit, right? Is that within the context of what the ordinance allows? After after hearing all of all of these points of view, after hearing the the advice and of the Office of Sustainability. And, uh, and then doing the best we can as volunteer neighbors who are sitting on this board. Um, it is not necessary. Well, so um, do we, do we uh, feel like we've heard enough to vote here? Yeah. Okay. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. And a motion on the request for a special motion. Yeah. 
goods produced, produced, produced by goods produced off site. Goods produced, produced off site. Right. Yeah. By other, by other, right. Yeah. Right. And second for that. Section D. Right. And then, so this would be to vote to deny subject to that condition. Correct. Okay. okay. And the vote is unanimous. Was that clear what we just said? Um, so I think we have to. Uh, we have to close. We're certainly going to be. Well, what we, what we were just, we were limiting your denial, the denial, to just that part that concerned selling goods made by other people off premises. Because otherwise, you're entitled to sell things that are made by employees on site and things that you make on site. So it, it has to be made on site? Right. Uh, okay. Right. Okay. Because that's allowed under the right. or under the home occupation. Is that Excuse totally me. changed with that? Yeah, we, we can't reopen the hearing. If, if there are if follow-up questions procedurally, they could be directed okay. afterwards. I just to don't understand what you just said. Oh, wait, I would deny her The things that she makes, she can sell. You, she can do that. <coughs> and if the nurse came to her house and made something. But this is helpful. this is in addition to the two twice a year of the studio, or well, I. You have a right to do that. That's as of right as well. Right. Yeah. I'm not really quite understanding. You, it, I think we confuse matters. You you can do what you're allowed to do within the purview of the definition of a home occupation. It's well. Why yeah, I, th I think that would be a discussion for, for Carolyn's office. Um, but specifically what we're prohibiting is the sale of, of goods made by other artists okay. that work off-site. And that could completely change and it could just be my stuff. I just wanted, that was my whole concept was opening it up to yes. the community to allow artists to be able to Make so much more like but that would be but that would be a retail that would be a right I mean but but, but follow up with Carolyn with Carolyn yeah. who can give you the parameters of, of what's involved in a business as a right a home occupation a home, a home, a home business, business. Oh, okay. Yes. okay should we do the minutes um, if, later if, if, whatever you guys wanted to do well, I, can we just vote to accept um, the minutes I make a motion that uh, do we already close this hearing yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. You're done. Mm -hmm. that's right. We're done. The motion that we approve the minutes. Second. And that's unanimous. And then a motion to adjourn. So much. Second. Second. Unanimous. Okay. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Thanks.